What's up, everybody? Welcome to We Have Cool Friends, the cool show where we interview our cool friends about the cool things they're doing. I'm Greg Miller, and this is Jack Buser. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Hello, thank you. Jack. How are you? I'm living the dream, man. Now, Jack, sadly, I bet a lot of people don't know who you are. All right? You're one of those guys. How long have I known you, you think? Oh, it has to be pushing 10 years right? now. Right? It's been least. a long yeah, yeah. time coming, getting you on a show with me to talk about everything. Uh, you are over at Google Stadia nowadays. Yes. You have a history with me with PlayStation. We'll talk about that later. But Google Stadia is what you're doing now. What do you do there? I am the director for games for okay. business development. Okay. This leads me to my first question. Is this going to work? Yes. That's all I, that's what <laughs> yes. I want to know. You know I'm, I'm high on cloud tech to begin with. Streaming games is the future I want. I went to E3, played at E3, talked about how great it was, resold me on Doom. I came home and started playing Doom awesome. again. Gave you one of my E3 awards, right? And then I put up a tweet about it, and everybody's like, Pfft. <laughs> not going to work on my internet, not going to work on my house. What do you say to them? Oh, boy, well, look, I mean, we actually have it running right now in an in internal beta at Google. So I actually have it on my work laptop. Um, I can pull a open a tab right next to my email and just play. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it works. I play it all the time <laughs> in my living room, uh, my Chromecast. Um, yeah, we've been running a beta now for quite some time. Yeah. Um, we actually did a... Uh, uh, what we call Project Stream yeah. uh, back in late 2018. We took Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Oh, I know. I know you love that game. Yeah. Um, and we launched it day and date with its launch on console and PC, and we streamed it to gamers all over the U.S., and we said, hey, we think we've figured out how to stream games. Yeah. Uh, tell us what you think. Um, and the test went over amazing. That's when we knew, okay, we can launch this. It's working. Like, yeah. Everybody's having a great experience. But is there... A terrifying element to that right you've you've written a big check right because my i think as i've said this is a future i've wanted for a long time for as much as i travel and for as much as i'm i have 15 minutes to kill wherever coffee shop airport you name it i remember when my wife came home from a business trip and it was right after i had just gotten uh, uh, the project i was i was playing you know jared and i were playing assassin's creed odyssey at this very table and like uh, microsoft had put out the x cloud video and it was all stuff and she had missed all this so she came in i started telling her about it and i realized Pretty quickly, I was evangelizing this in the same way I was YouTube, in the same way, you know, I was like apostle, holy ghost above my head, being like, no, you need to listen, and this is what it is. Like, I feel like there's so many of us, but then every time something happens, right, every time there's a new stat for what the internet and speeds need to be, or somebody talks about how bad the internet is in the middle of the country here in America, it seems like someone's trying to rain on this parade. Are you confident you can nail this at launch? Yeah, look, you know, the, the bar for a new gaming service is high, and we yeah. have to meet that bar for gamers. Uh, I'm a gamer, you're a gamer, yeah. right? Um, it has to be a system that's solid and works and has the games, and that's what we intend to deliver. Um, in terms of the internet, you know, the internet of today is quite different than it was a few years ago. You, you know, I've been working on cloud streaming for games for a sure. long time. Um, and when it first became an idea, a notion that this could be something that is actually you know, something that could be rolled out to gamers. Uh, the internet was a very different place. Sure. You know, the revolution of Wi-Fi in people's homes that's high bandwidth, you know, high stability hadn't really happened yet. Yeah. Um, but you look at the internet today, you know, there's people watching your show, streaming it over YouTube and Twitch and, you know, downloading media, watching Netflix. The internet is a pretty robust place. Uh, the time for a service like this is right. Um, and so we're super excited about later on this year when it launches and people actually get their hands on it. Yeah, I don't know if you know, November's coming up quick. Yeah. yeah, yeah probably little, should put a real little, date on that one, huh? A little, little intense right now. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah we're all, uh, you know, it's the energy in the office is pretty incredible. Uh, we were talking earlier, you know, Jared's with us now. Yeah, you and stole get, Jared yeah, from me, of course. Love hanging out with Jared. And, um, you know, you can talk to him about what the mood is in the office right now. I mean, everybody's just so excited. I've been See, I would love to talk to Jared about the mood, but every time I ask Jared anything about Google, he's like, I he's can't, like, I can't, I can't tell you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Jared. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I mean, the mood is incredible right now. People are super jazzed. I've been working on the project now for about four years. There are people in the office that have been working on, had been working on it for years before I even showed up. Yeah. Um, so just the ability to actually get this in gamers' hands and just like – you know, these controllers are going to be launching later this year and people are going to take them home and have an experience like they've never had before. Yeah. Uh, to be a part of that is, I mean, just incredible. It's really a once in a lifetime kind of thing for us. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you and I were just talking about in the other room, right? Like I played Borderlands 3 all weekend long yeah. and I, I'm getting on the plane tomorrow. And it's like the dream of being able to just take this and toss this controller in my bag and have it on my iPhone, right? My iPad, my computer is ready to go. Like that's what it's all about. Yeah. I mean, just personal anecdote. I was playing 
Assassin's Creed Odyssey, ACO, whatever, playing ACO uh, at, as part of Project Stream. And I got really used to the idea of just being able to play it at work, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's was, why you got a door on your office. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I wish. Um, no, totally. But just like, you know, I get a free moment at work and I just, you know, fire it up and just make a little bit of progress. And just that freedom of being able to play it wherever I had an internet connection, yeah. I kind of got a little spoiled by it. It was yeah. subconscious. I didn't even realize it was happening at the time. Um, and then, you know, we basically stopped the test and I had to go back to normal console gaming and here I was on the couch I'm like ah what's missing right it's like well I'm kind of stuck here all the time playing games um I miss that I really as a gamer cannot wait for this thing to launch so I can start playing the games that I love and just with that degree of freedom you know and be able to play yeah. at work maybe a little bit <laughs> <laughs> but also just wherever I have an internet connection yeah uh, ladies and gentlemen, of course, this is cool. We Have Cool Friends, a show that comes to you each and every Monday on YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny, RoofStreet.com, podcast services around the globe. Remember, we're still a baby show, still feeling out the first few weeks of it. It would mean a lot to us if you went to iTunes, uh, subscribed, rated us there, left a little review. Then, of course, if you go to YouTube, uh, like, subscribe, share, all that jazz. Uh, today, we're brought to you by Patreon producers Al Tribesman and David Mindtel. Mind free. I say that for his name <laughs> but I, he, I don't host many kind of funny shows anymore I just do a lot of kind of funny game stuff so I really get to say mind freak so it's always a big deal <laughs> uh, and uh, our sponsor is Upstart but we will tell you about that later Jack what do you think here you are what rem- two months removed we'll say I know there's no date but November sometimes two months removed from the launch of Stadia what for you guys and the team do you feel is your biggest hurdle well, I think right now, you know, we're on the home stretch, right? Yeah. So, you know, everything's pretty much locked and loaded right now. We've got to make sure every I is dotted and T is crossed. We've got to make sure that, you know, the games are going to be ready there on day one and that we're going to put our best possible foot forward. Um, but like you said, you know, time is, you know, yeah. it's go time right yeah. now. And so I think really we're just excited to have this thing launch and get it out there and just see how people are interacting with it and just get feedback from gamers and go from there. Uh, we talk all the time. It's like it's like it feels like launch is the finish line, um, but it That's isn't. The starting <laughs> the point, starting right? point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I've been telling my team, I'm like, you guys, like, you know, this is going to be a journey, right? And when we launch this thing, that that is day one, right? Yeah. And we're going to, you know, be hearing feedback from gamers. We're going to be watching the data. We're going to be making sure that, you know, people are getting a great experience. And we just got to be ready, right? We got to. It is it is go time on day one. Um, so it. Could be more excited. Um, <laughs> <laughs> How hard is it right now as we record this, obviously, for you to hold back your excitement? I guess the information, right? Because yeah. I feel like that's the interesting thing is that we don't know official release date, right? We don't know an official lineup. We just saw Apple Arcade, right, though, yeah. in a week come out and be like, we're doing this next week. And then here's 65 games or whatever it was and everybody going crazy. Is that is that the kind of excitement you're looking for rather than like a more traditional video game launch of like, hey, we've known for months what's going to happen? Yeah, so I'm in business development, so I get to work on games that won't launch for years, sure. actually. So um, a lot of the work to deliver the launch lineup was done quite some time ago. Yeah, so yeah, that's yeah. one of the things about biz dev is like our real go time was last year where it's like, right, we got to <laughs> lock this stuff in because, you know, launch is less than a year away or just over a year away. Yeah. Um, you know, I was actually going through our, you know, the titles we've announced for the platform, and we're up over 40 games now, yeah. which is crazy. I mean, I know you're a student of the games industry. You can go back and look at just about any game platform that's launched in the history of game platforms. You can go back and look at the Dreamcast and stuff sure. like that. And having a lineup of, like, 40 games that have been announced before the thing is even out is yeah. pretty crazy. Yeah. So I'm, I'm super proud of our team and the work that they've done to deliver these titles. I mean... Cyberpunk and Doom Eternal and the list goes on. Dude, that's on. the thing is like for me, you're swinging for the fences with it, right? Where it isn't like, you know, I, was, I mentioned Apple Arcade. You know, we were talking about this yeah. again, right? Okay, cool. I'm getting on the plane tomorrow, which meant this weekend. What can I only play in the house? Great. Right. So now on the plane, here are the games I can't play, whether it be on Switch and be Untitled Goose Game or whether it's Apple Arcade and it's more uh, uh, Grindstone. With Stadia, like, and I would have talked about since the you know, E3 thing where I came back and I was like, it works and it's great and this is that the other. It suddenly does become the thing for me. Yeah. The guy who's drinking out of the PlayStation trophy glass, right? <laughs> of well, if Cyberpunk can go with me anywhere, I mean, why wouldn't I play it only on that platform? Why yeah. I not worry about the trophies? Not worry about any ecosystem I've been in. I mean, look, I, I I've been working on cloud streaming for a long time. This is the promise. Yeah. Um, 
you know, but it's going to take a company like Google to actually realize it. Um, I don't think people understand maybe how much goes on behind the scenes to actually realize a service like this launching in 14 countries. I mean, I definitely can't imagine. Yeah, I mean, it, it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just the the technology, the infrastructure, the the just the people behind the scenes making this all happen. This is a Herculean effort. You know, the games industry has never seen anything like this before. Yeah. Um, you know, I have the benefit of being able to see behind the curtain and watch how we've grown as a team. Team and as a technology stack over the last four years, and it, it's staggering what's been done. Um, this is really a once-in-a-lifetime thing for, for a lot of us on the team, um, and we're going to finally see that promise of cloud streaming that I personally have dreamt about for so long actually materialize in a product that, you know, it's going to deliver. So then, Jack, you mentioned this, biz dev, right? Yep. You're in charge of the games over there. What does that mean like a day-to-day? What does that look like for oh. you in your role? <laughs> well, I play a lot of games. Um, oh, man, you poor guy. You yeah, poor yeah, soul. Yeah. It's tough. <laughs> it's tough. Um, take it day by day. <laughs> uh, no, it, it, we do play a lot of games. Uh, we get a lot of game pitches from people that have game ideas. Uh, we see a lot of builds, you know, early on. You got to... You, ha- you become very, very skilled at looking at an early build of a game. Sure. Um, and understanding whether it has that fun. Sure. Uh, and what the potential of What is, the potential right? is, right? And you have to be able to recognize when something is going to be big, even though it might not be self-evident. Um, and so, yeah, it's a lot of just deeply understanding games and understanding what makes a fun game and being able to place the right bets and make sure we have the right games on the platform. I think yeah. we've done great so far. I'll be the judge of that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly right. Um, you know, and I, I think you're exactly right. When gamers get their hands on these games, did we pick the right games? Do we, ha- do we have the right lineup? Um, what are we missing? What do we need to go out there and get? You know, we'll be taking all that. We already are getting all that feedback and acting on it for sure. Yeah. And so then is that... Like what sold you on coming to the company is like that Google's committed to this. Because that's the thing, right? We've seen different products from different companies launch and then fizzle out or go away or whatever. And like you're saying, launch day isn't the end. That's actually the start. Well, yeah. I mean, remember, I was at PlayStation. I know. Um, I know. <laughs> and Google knew that. Um, they weren't going to tell me what they were doing. Mm-hmm. Um, and so uh, they basically came and knocked on my door, as it were, and said, hey, we're Google. Uh, we think we're doing something interesting over here, but we can't tell you what it is. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh, man, this is going to be tough. Um, But, you know, I just took a leap of faith. Um, PlayStation, to this day, I mean, I I consider them family. Um, I was there for a long, long, long time, a huge fan uh, from the sidelines now. So it took a lot to to leave PlayStation. It's it's funny. I usually don't let people out of the friend zone early. Okay. But uh, Jorge, not George, writes in and says, For Jack, could you share your mindset when Google approached you while at Sony? Anything in particular about the vision that drew you and excited you? And were there any moments you questioned your decision to move? Because, yeah, you had been at PlayStation forever, right? Yeah, I mean, I always say it was one of the toughest decisions in my life, actually, was to go on this journey. Um, I didn't know what it was. Um, really, the, Google was very, very secretive about what was going on with Stadia and was for quite some time. I think most of the world found out what we were doing when we actually made our announcement at GDC. And in this industry, you know, keeping a secret is yes, tough. It's, That's it's tough. tough, right? Yeah. But, you know, the, hats off. Like, we, we, they did it, you know. Um, and so it was really a leap of faith for me. I had been at PlayStation for a long time, loved my team, loved, you know, the people I was working for. Um, but you know, I mean, you know this, I mean, look, look around you kind of funny, right? You had to take a leap of faith and you know what that feels like. It's like, you're just like, you know, I'm just going to do this and see where it goes. You only get 80 some odd years on this planet, right? You might as well take a, take a risk and see what happens. And, um, you know, when I showed up at Google and they actually showed me what they were working on, they sort of pull back the curtain and they're like, that's our infrastructure. And you're just like, whoa, okay. I'd never, I'd didn't even realize something like that existed on earth, right? Unless you're inside and you actually see what that infrastructure looks like. um, It's really tough to wrap your head around. I always say, people are like, well, what's it like? What's it like? I'm like, imagine like a hundred years ago, looking up at the Golden Gate Bridge and going, people built that, Yeah, right? It's kind of like that. It's like this marvel of human engineering that you can only kind of wrap your head around, but yet there it is you know, powering a giant chunk of the internet. <laughs> it was like, whoa, that's cool. So help me, because I don't even know this. How does your path to here start? Was this always that you wanted to work in games forever? Did you fall into it by accident? Yeah, so I loved two things growing up. I loved uh, games and I loved music. Um, yeah. And I really found my calling when the first Sound Blasters started coming out and I would just like be building 
you know, PCs and throwing sound blasters in there and playing with digital audio. And then, you know, I discovered that the Amiga had digital <laughs> audio. And like, I got really, really into that intersection of games and audio technology specifically, but just games in general. Um, and so I went off to engineering school, actually. Mm -hmm. My parents couldn't be further from engineering, both humanities professors. And they're just like, what are you doing? And Where were you growing up? Uh, Louisville, Kentucky, oh, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Louisville, Kentucky. Love Louisville. We can yeah. talk, talk for an hour about Louisville as well. You throw the best derby parties. Yeah, so I do That's indeed. where it comes from. Indeed. That's where it comes from. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, just went off to engineering school. And I remember talking to my advisor. And I was like, I don't know. You know, I kind of work, want to work on something related to digital audio. And he's like, well, the only digital audio that's left are these cards for games. And I'm like, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, yes, please. Okay. Um, and I got very, very lucky. Uh, Dolby Laboratories came out on campus right as I was graduating, uh, graduating undergrad. And they were like, yeah, come on out. You know, we need kids that understand digital audio. The DVD player just kind of become a thing. Sure. Um, and I was fortunate there and that the PS2 came along and had a DVD player. In oh, it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, hey, I think we might be able to make these games sound as good as those DVDs. And so I worked on Dolby Sound for Games. So every time you see that Dolby logo yeah. pop up in games, especially, you know, back then, that, that's what I was doing. So what was that? You, that's you tweaking the audio or is that you working with audio techs to get them in touch with uh, PlayStation developers, publishers? Oh, all of the above. Oh, so wow. we would go and talk to all the developers about how to do amazing immersive surround sound. We'd talk to the console manufacturers about how to, you know, build chips that could actually do like real time Dolby digital encoding. Remember gotcha. the first Xbox had that in there? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's amazing. Ga worked on GameCube, Dolby Pro Logic 2, and all that early stuff. It was awesome. Um, you know, and it was it was funny back then working for a company that wasn't really in games and yeah. showing them like, you don't understand. Like games are gonna be like movies in the future. Like they're going to go high definition and they're going to have surround sound and they're going to be totally immersive and, you know, and have people go. Then everybody looked at beautiful Joe. They're like, what are you talking <laughs> what are you about? Talking? <laughs> <laughs> That's, right. That's right. But you know, back then, like, you know, I think we saw it. If you were into games, you kind of sure. knew what the next 10 years were going to be like. I always talk about it, right? Like for me, it was uh, PS1 and it was Metal Gear. Yeah. When okay. I put in Metal Gear and I was like, holy shit, they are making the game I've always dreamed exactly. of. Exactly. And so now, you know, because I'm, I love this stuff so much and I'm so close to it, again, it's like if you're into this stuff, and especially when you can kind of see it from the inside being in the industry, you sure. can kind of predict what the next 10 years are going to be like. You're going to see a shift, right? In the way that we saw that shift from cartridge to optical media, and, you know, playing Metal Gear is a perfect example yeah. where you're like, okay, this couldn't really have been done on an NES cart in the same way as it is on this PlayStation disc, yeah. right? That, yeah full high fidelity experience that you're getting. And then there was another shift when games went from offline to online. And if you played some of those early online games, you know, I was in college at the time playing on, you know, my school's land. Everybody's going, land, yeah. Yeah, you were like, okay, I can see where this is going to go, right? And yeah. now you have services like Xbox Live and people play online all the time. There's going to be another big shift. Oh, God, right? what and, is it? Well, it's going to be that games aren't limited to a plastic box in your living room mm, anymore, mm, right? Mm. And game developers are going to be able to do stuff because they're leveraging technology that could never be sold to an end consumer in the and this form is, of a box that plugs in. This your is wall. back to what we're always talking about with the cloud, right? Yeah. The cloud computing and what we're using there. This is, this is the next big shift in what a game can be. Um, and you're already seeing developers take a look at you know this infrastructure and go, well, wait a minute. You mean I'm not limited to this, like, particular set of the stack of technology. I could actually have a game that expands and takes, you know, basically takes advantage of this entire data center or this network of data centers. And you're like, yeah, like the creative possibilities are pretty endless. And you see these top minds in the industry go, you see it click, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're thinking of stuff that we could never think of at of Google. Course. And they're going, well, wait a minute, that means I could do X or Y. And you're just like, yeah, do that. <laughs> that sounds incredible, <laughs> right? Um, so yeah. the question I have for you then, as this soothsayer that can see into the future and all this <laughs> stuff, when do you, and this isn't trying to be loaded, when do you see that kind of stuff happen? Because I feel like we always get to that junction of like, wow, there's all these different technologies, blah, 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 and think about like how powerful PS3 was, right? But you saw it, well, we're going to make it for the 360 and bring it over, right? It was like, what's going to sell? What's going to move? What's worth the investment? You're going to see us start to scratch the surface right in the very beginning, yeah. right? So you probably saw us hint at... Uh, we showed Ghost Recon, yeah. where you're playing multiplayer with a few other friends, and you're playing, and then you're like, oh, actually, I want to see the screen that my friends see, mm -hmm. right? And that's because we're actually able to reroute the video feed from your you know, machine in the cloud to my machine in the cloud. And suddenly, I have a heads-up display of every single person on my team and what they're seeing out of their eyes, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. And, 
again, that's just scratching the surface of this stuff, right? That's just the very beginning. I think in this first year after we launch, you're going to see more and more games do stuff where you're like, hang on. Like, a console couldn't do that. A PC couldn't do that, Yeah. right? Um, and within, you know, I would say even a few years, you're going to, of course, see games that literally could never run on a console or a PC no matter how fast because they're being built specifically for the cloud. Mm-hmm. See, that's the fascinating. That's the, that's, that's, that's the good stuff it's right coming. there, right? Yeah, yeah. it's coming. And you, this is going to be a shift. Again, you know, if you've been around playing games for a long time, you remember, like, the very first games that started to harness, you know, everybody's talking Final Fantasy VII right now, you know? It's yeah. like, I remember the first time playing that game and going, ah, that's what optical media can do, right? Yeah. You're going to start to see that same sort of stuff happen in cloud as well. So then, again, to where we're at and looking to the future, right? Mm-hmm. How do you look at, X Cloud, uh, whatever PlayStation is going to do, <laughs> you know what I mean? I, they got to be doing something with PlayStation Five and PlayStation Now and all that jazz. Like, is it number? Is it a? I would imagine if I'm in your shoes, it's a confluence, right? Of it's awesome. You know, competition obviously breeds success. We love that. Uh, everybody needs to be on board with this to make this all work. But then also, is there part of it of like, well, you're first out the gate. Like, it's all eyes on you as the first like real product doing this. Yeah, look, a rising tide lifts all boats. And so to see companies like Microsoft get into the game and go, yeah, we're all in on this too. It's like, it's great. It's vindicating. It's like, yes, you know, as a gamer, first and foremost, I'm like, all right, well, as fast as we can get to this new generation of games that's doing stuff that could never be done on a gaming PC or console, like, yes, let's get there as fast as we can. I think there's another part of Stadia that we talk about, but again, it's going to take some time to fully realize is that it's going to enable people who don't have access to game consoles actually Mm. be able to play the games that we love. Sure. And I love to talk about this with my friends. It's like, you know, really the mission that a lot of us are on is like, we love this stuff, but we also know that a lot of these games are like locked behind a three, four, $500 console. Um, And I remember a time in my life where that was prohibitive. Right. Totally. And especially if you look at certain areas on the planet where like the idea of buying a, you know, a new game console is like, it's not going to happen. Right. You just don't have the resources to make that happen. But why shouldn't everybody have access to these types of experiences? Why shouldn't they be able to just use whatever device they have to be able to play these play these games that we love? You know, look at the best selling game consoles of all time. You're talking 100 million, 150 million units sold. Yeah. Okay. But there's billions of people on this planet. And I love video games. I want to get them in as many hands as humanly possible. And you're only going to do that by breaking down the barrier to those experiences, right? Yeah. And that's really one of the promises of cloud streaming. It's like, hey, you got a screen? Can you stream video to it? Okay, great. Let's go. Let's play some games. Yeah. It's a tall order, right? And I feel like that's why it's always the chicken and the egg thing, right? Of like, the Wii was able to break through and get into my mom's living room, right? Because she came to my house and saw me playing it. And it's the same thing I assume here, right? Of like having someone you know use Stadia, you come over and see that, and then it becomes of, oh, that's a cool game, and maybe it is something as crazy as an Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Maybe it's something as simple as a grindstone. You know what I mean? Of like, here's a smaller game to get you in the door and get you going. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be a journey. Right. And I, I, again, I look at, I've known you for a long time. I've watched your journey with kind of funny and seen the thing that you've built over time. I mean, that doesn't happen overnight. That's hard work. Right. And I remember it took you a long time even to get to the point where it was a thing. Yeah. Right. And then you worked and worked and worked and built it into what it is now. And you look into the future. Well, what's going to be in the future? I mean, I'm sure you have a vision for that. Yeah. Yeah. But it takes hard work, you know, and you need, I mean, you have legions of folks on your side that re- see what you're doing here and you're all in mm. on, you know, kind of funny and here to support you. And that audience grows over time. The same is true of a game platform. You know, if you've yeah. been in this industry for a long time, you realize like you've got to get started. Right. And that what looks like the finish line of launch is actually the starting line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and once you get started, like you've just got to start to show gamers what it is that you got on offer and prove to them like, yeah, this is awesome. This is worthy of you telling your friends to go on this journey with you. Yeah. Builds over time. That's a great point. I hadn't thought about it that way because I think, you know, I always t- use this example of Roman season passes were a big hot button issue. Right. And people would get so mad when the season passes we get announced for a game and they didn't detail the information. And my argument was always Batman Arkham Knight, where they announced that season pass, and I happily gave them the money. Because I was like, I trust Rock City, and I'm in for the ride, right? But it was so many people who never had any intention of buying the season pass who were really mad about it. And I feel like that's an interesting spot where we're at with Stadia and Cloud Streaming, where you do have an audience of people like me that are like, 
I am here and I am happy to beta test this. And I am happy to get in there and see what and figure out in like a year, six months, a year from now, a two years from now, see how it has actually evolved and what it's changed into, right? But it is obviously the naysayers on our internet forums and Twitter and everybody else who are like so against the idea without trying it, which is what drives me crazy. Yeah, and I mean, it's it's part of launching something incredibly new and different, right? I mean, people have not tried it yet, so to be skeptical is totally natural. Of course. I mean, can't blame anybody for being skeptical of something they haven't tried before, and sure. it seems like magic. You're like, okay, really? You're going to do that? Um, so totally. And the people that have bought, we have what we're calling the Founders Edition. Sounds right. like, yeah, you ordered one. Thank you. I did, no problem. Uh, uh, well, when you're like, you get to <laughs> reserve your name, I was like, oh, God damn uh, Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not getting, what's that? Kevin, what's that one? Oh, Snapchat, that's it. I'm not getting Snapchat yeah, yeah, again. Yeah, yeah, No, we just said Or Pokemon uh, Go, you jerks. <laughs> it's uh, it's sold out in Europe now, and we're like, okay, wow. we're replacing it with the Premiere Edition. One of the things is you can't reserve your name. Mm-hmm. You know, it's going to have those little yeah, numbers yeah, after yeah, your name. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so... Yeah, the, so, you know, the people that are going on this journey with us in these early days that bought that Founders Edition, you know, we want to make them proud. We want to give them something to talk about with their friends. Yeah. Um, and that's really what motivates us, again, back in the office. Like, we want to put our best foot forward with the launch of this thing. Um, but it ain't over on day one. No, yeah. Right? No way, that, that's no going to be where we're going to be listening to everybody. What's working? What's not? What do you like? What do you not like? What games are there that you love? What games do you wish were here? You know, that's all going to be feedback that we're getting from gamers that we're going to be listening to and taking action on. So dial me back, though. You're at Dolby. Mm-hmm. You're working on this tech stuff. You're going on. You're working on GameCubes doing all this jazz. <laughs> How does that get you to PlayStation? Um, well, okay. Um, I was basically in the audience of Phil Harrison, who was talking about PlayStation Home and oh, yeah. Little Big Planet. GDC. You remember GDC? This is my first uh, event. I was two days old at IGN, and I and went to this GDC. I Big was, old soccer balls getting kicked around. I was so obsessed with online communities and virtual worlds yeah. and the promise of what an MMO could be. And I saw PlayStation Home, and I was just like, oh, okay, that's so cool. And I had a friend working at PlayStation named Carter Lipscomb. You may have heard of him. I know Carter. Know Carter. He goes, Jack, get over here. We're putting the band back together. And I'm like, oh, I can't <laughs> say no to Carter. I've been at Dolby for almost 10 years. And I'm like, it was one of those things where I'm like, you know what? Just going to make the jump, see what happens. Yeah. And I showed up and, you know, there was PlayStation Home. And it's, you know, very early, early days. There wasn't much going on. It was just like this, basically a few rooms with, you know, it hadn't even launched yet. There was nobody oh, in no, there. Yeah, I, was just, yeah. I was in my avatar. I'm like, all right, <laughs> let's get started. We launched, and you know, um, we all remember how the launch went. Um, and we just worked and worked and worked and worked for years, just quietly squirreling away on that thing um, to just put more and more games and content and all kinds of fun stuff in there. Um, I mean, ends up that team friends for life. You know, yeah. I mean, we were like just like this band that were just like on this mission. Um, I think we broke like I don't know. 20 million, 25 million people by the time it was over with. It was such a wild ride. Yeah. Um, so they were like, okay, well, you know, why don't you work on something else? And um, I got to work on PlayStation Plus. Um, I basically built what is known as the instant game collection sure. with my dear friend Brandon and the whole team. Um, we had this idea of like, hey, why can't we build a subscription of games, right? Where you could subscribe and get them. No one would subscribe to that. Get out of here. <laughs> I still remember when we announced it at E3 and we're like, all right, and everybody's going home with a membership. And I was like, ah, I'm like, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I worked on PlayStation Now for a long time, yeah. worked on the subscription there. Um, so you can see this uh, movement, right? Yeah, you're, yeah, you're, yeah. You're, you're chasing it. Yeah. Chasing when next. PlayStation Now is a thing, I was like, I want to work on that. That is cool, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, it was... You know, I've been very fortunate in my career just because I'm really into this stuff. I love future-looking technology. I love new ways of making games accessible to people. That's what really motivates me, so that's what I've always worked on. Yeah. I feel our history, right, and when I first met you, is one of those reasons why I think I'm so excited for not knowing a lot about Stadia, but where it could, it, could, it seems like it's going and what I've played. Because I will never forget meeting you the first time when I came in. Because I think, and you can tell what me if I'm wrong. I, you can check the IGN article the one because I, I went and previewed PlayStation Home and that like, right. a, like it was a, what it was that. like a triple point PR or whatever. Like that's I came right. across the park and went in there and did it. And it was if it wasn't at the exact same time, it was the exact same room where I got the PlayStation. Were you trophy interning demo. at that time? Oh no, no, I never interned. Please, I'm tired. I'm tired. <laughs> but I was a young you know PlayStation a team long guy. Time ago, and man. Totally, it was one of those things that I think Roper probably looked at and was like. 
PlayStation Home sent Greg. Because right? right? it was like, what is this? Nobody knew what this exactly. was. I don't even know if this is one I'd already broken exactly. the embargo on the beta. Yeah. It doesn't matter. <laughs> but I remember coming in there and meeting you, and you were so excited. Yeah. And it was infectious of leaving there and being like, I don't, I come back and like, how was it? I was like, well, it's weird, but like, <laughs> This guy Jack love and he's like into it. And I like I think I'd want he's he, I don't think he's fucking with me. Like he's legitimately that into PlayStation Home. And every time I saw you from there on out, like in in this is gonna sound bad, but it's not. Go on. Our industry is filled with people who remember your name. Oh hey, what's good to you, Mama? You and me were like friends from that yep, moment. And, and right. not in the casual acquaintance way, but like legitimately of like how you doing? Oh, what, I wanted to know as much about PlayStation Home as you wanted to know what was happening with me and IGN. Yeah. And the fact, like you just said, you worked on it for so many years in the way that you were committed to it. And when it did come out and it was a rough launch, and you were like, <laughs> what is this thing? Bubble machines, get out of here. Oh, here we go. Kevin brought this up. Uh, PlayStation yeah, Home hands on. Oh, see, now this is when I oh. broke the embargo. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, That's yeah, awesome. May 2012. Hey, thanks, right? Greg. That's a, that can't be right. Oh, no. Posted September okay. 20, 2008. That's when it was updated. So 2008. 2008, yeah, Ooh, is when I got into the PlayStation Home younger. beta, <laughs> ran into an IGN Capture Bay, <laughs> captured it, published it, wrote this, and the next Thanks day, Sony called. Thanks for that. It was like, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Did you read the NDA? I think, NDAs? I think it might have been that guy right back there that gave you the yeah, phone probably, call. probably, probably. <laughs> but you were so committed to Home and so really yeah. into it and so excited to tell us how you'd fixed it. Every time. like you, it, It's the same way I talk about how... Um, I guess more publicly and quietly, PlayStation's committed to PlayStation VR. Yeah. Like I thought their messaging on yeah. that was so great when she was like, we're launching this thing. It's like launching the PlayStation. It's not going to be amazing at launch. We're going to be committed to it. And we're going to stick it out and do all this different stuff. I feel like that's what it was for home with you on a much more personal level where you kept doing interviews and you kept coming out and you kept being in front of it being like, listen, we know we're not there yet, but we're going to get there. Uh, look, I mean, life is short, right? Yeah. You have to work on stuff that you love. Um, that's rule number one advice that I give folks like, hey, Jack, what career advice do you have? It's like, look, just work on stuff that you love because otherwise when things are tough, if things get bumpy, like it can be really rough if it's something you're not truly into and something you don't truly love. Um, and it doesn't matter what you work on. There's going to be highs and lows, right? right? I'm sure you know this with your, your day job, I've had, right? I've had it's all perfect low. all yeah. the time, right? <laughs> um, and so you just have to be on something that you love and have a vision for where you want it to be and know that you can get it there. Um, and that's the secret to success. Even games, you'll see games that are that'll go out and you know have a vision, but may, might not be able to fully realize that vision on day one. But they stick with it. No man's sky. Yeah, happens all the time. Yeah. Happens all the time, um, especially in the games industry. And you see it, and you're like, okay, the people that really have that vision and stick with it. I mean, that's how you achieve greatness. Yeah, you know, um, it's the starting line when we yeah. launch. It's the starting line. Um, I think we're gonna have a great launch, and I think. We'll have the games there, and I think people have a great experience in their home. But are we done? Absolutely not. Right? Yeah. That is just the beginning. Um, and and I think the whole team feels that way. Uh, I think we are all super, super passionate about what we're doing. Uh, we're in it for the long haul. You know, and I believe you. That's the thing I'm that's driving true. at. That's true. I mean, you I, know me. Oh, yeah. and I, and that's what I'm trying right to drive to them. You know <laughs> what I mean? Is that I feel like if it and and, and I don't want to try to be that guy, but if it was a suit. If it was somebody that you didn't know, if it was a, a career CEO saying all this, you'd be like, "All right, whatever." Yeah. It's Jack. Yeah. Like I know you're you're legitimately <laughs> committed to this. You're, on, you know, I mean, like you're the team they've allowed you to be a part of and help build and create and everything you're doing. Like you wouldn't be there if you didn't believe in it because you are like a legit game, right? You're, we've been PSN friends forever. forever. I see you all the time. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Look and proof proofs in the pudding. Um, you know, I, I think it's it's totally fine if people are like, oh, okay, well, you know. Does he really believe what he's sure. talking about and blah, blah. Like, I get that. Like, if people don't know me, but, like, you know me. And, like, we'll see a few years from now. I'll still be there, you yeah. know, doing yeah, my yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, I love this thing. I love what it's what's possible. I love what we're going to launch on day one. But I know where we're going to be is going to be just magical. Um, and the opportunity to bring games to people that can't have them right sure. now, like... Oh, that just totally motivates me. Well, it's also the you know the idea of bringing the best version of a game to somebody. Totally. That's the thing that I think gets lost a lot when we talk about it. Is like I'm, you know, excited to use it because I want my games that anywhere. But even I am like, well, I'm 
also playing them on a super high end PC, right? That I would never build or want to tinker with or anything. I hate that part, right? That's why I like consoles. <laughs> I, I, know, I, I know. I know you've heard it once we're, or we're twice. Friend. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I love plugging we're my friend. console in and going. Yeah. And so for it to be beamed down and not have to worry about any of that on the back end. That's all on you guys to make sure I'm using the best version and everything's going. Totally. Like, that's totally. awesome. I mean, it's a it it's an incredibly powerful game platform and it will get better over time. That's another thing that I think, you know, proof will be in the pudding, but yeah. you'll see over the years as consoles and PCs get more and more powerful, Stadia will get more powerful. It's just the difference is there's not going to be anybody knocking on your door going, it's time to plonk down another $400. It's like, hey, that endpoint that you've been using is just getting better and better and better and better and the games are looking more yeah. and more amazing and doing things that you couldn't even imagine you know, years back on Stadia, um, it's evolving over time. It's it's totally a different kind of game platform than the industry's ever seen. Before. Which is why everyone's so skeptical of it. Right, because we've never seen it before. And people have been burned, obviously, yeah, before sure. with other people coming around thinking they got the solution. But Google is a name you kind of tend to trust. <laughs> <laughs> they kind of understand what they're doing with this kind Google's of tech. Google's a pretty special company there aren't a lot of companies on planet earth that could even think about pulling off something like this and then for google to step up and go yep we're in we're doing it it's yeah. like okay like hats off to google it's like uh, they see this they truly look at you know high fidelity triple a games and they're like how do we do what we've done in ind other industries and get these amazing experiences into the hands of as many people as possible they look at it as like a problem that has to be solved. Yeah. yeah. Um, and to be at a company where it's like, well, of course we have to do this. Um, <laughs> we have to. Let's we, go we have to yeah, do yeah. this. Like we can't keep games locked up in these expensive boxes. We have to get them into the hands of as many people as possible. We have to reach billions of people. Um, do you think that's the thing right now? Not even the industry, but I guess the general public is underselling in terms of the idea of what you said of getting it to different people. Right now, I think so many people are hung up on the Founders Edition, right? Mm -hmm. $130. We're getting all this cool stuff. You get the you blah, blah, blah. But in reality, when the game drops, it's going to be like, do you have a controller? Do you just have an iPhone and iPad? You're going to be able to buy the game and play. I mean, when I was playing Project Stream, I just had my... <laughs> basically in DualShock and I yeah. plugged it into my work laptop and I was playing. Yeah. Um, it's amazing. You just open up a tab in your browser. I mean, it's literally Chrome. Yeah. Like, there was no install or plug in or download or app or anything. It just worked. Um, it's funny. It's like, you kind of get spoiled after a while. You're like, well, yeah, of course I should be able to get at my game wherever I have a browser and sure. an internet connection. Um, but it's, don't when you start seeing me in the next <laughs> few months really bang the drum for everything should be cross save and cross progression. This is why. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You know, I mean, absolutely. We're super into cross save. We're super into cross progression. Like knock down as many of these artificial barriers as humanly possible. Um, because look, we love this stuff and we want as many people to have access access to it as possible. And the only way you get there is to get rid of all the shenanigans and just allow people to get at the games that they want. You know, as long as they have something that's capable of rendering the game, which yeah. now the bar has been, you know, does your laptop play high definition YouTube videos? Okay, you're probably in pretty good shape, you know? Yeah, yeah. that's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just insane to and think about the technology and what it's going to be able to do. And again, look, we'll be just on day one, right? We want to get this into our founders' hands. We want them to have a great experience. We want them to fire it up. We want the games to look amazing, play amazing. That's job one. Right. And once we get there, then you'll see this thing start to evolve in ways that'll be pretty mind boggling for you and the team, I guess. How are you, I guess, signposting that is are you looking and like, do you have specifics like three weeks out? We want this three months, three years. Like, are there those kind of objectives? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. No, we plan very, very far into the future. Um, this infrastructure that we're rolling out, um, it isn't cheap. Um, and so we need to be very, very uh, diligent about our planning process. Uh, we look very, very far into the future and set goals for where we want to be as a platform. Um, and again, even in my role as business development, you know how long games take to build. Oh, yeah. I mean, they take years to build, right? Yeah. So we're working on technology now that won't be implemented in games for many, many years to come. Um, but that's the industry that we're in. Those are the lead times. And so people are always like, oh, how do you know Google's in this for the long? I'm like, uh, yeah, <laughs> you kind of have to be See, if you're that, building a game platform. That's a big one for me, too, that I wanted to bring up. I'm probably going to do it next, right? Is that, again, it's that I believe in you, right? And I believe in the, the tech of what I've seen. And I, I'm, you know, I it's, it can't be said enough. I'm very passionate about this and excited Thank about you, this. Thank you, Greg. My question then becomes, though, do you believe in Google, right? You have these ideas. The team has these ideas. 
you know, I know it's such a tired thing, but like, is it going to be Google Plus? Like, that's always what people lob when this question comes up. Look, proof's in the pudding, right? So we're never going to completely answer that question until we've been on the market for years. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but yeah. we'll be there. And then I'll turn around and go, remember when you said? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll have a robotic well, That's right. But look, I mean, I guess... There's a number of different ways of answering the question. You, we're on, you know, the friend show. So I'll tell, cool you as my, yeah, I'll tell you as, a, as your friend, like, I would not be there if I did not believe that we were going to be there in the long haul. Uh, but then there's a more technical way of looking at it, which is when you're planning infrastructure investments and you're planning, you know, game content investments, like yeah. you have to be in for the long term. Yeah. Right? You, there's no way to do that without having a very long runway. Yeah. Right. Uh, you can't go and, you know, work with the best game developers in the world on a game that's not going to launch for many years to come and then not be there in a few, like, you, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, no, it's no, just totally, the totally, nature totally. of the business. Are um, a lot of the deals and developers you're working with now, are you guys working on exclusive stuff or is that more like, just, hey, and I'm not fishing. I swear I'm not fishing. <laughs> I'll tell you. Is it just like, hey, triple A dev? <laughs> like, it just, here's it's not my, like you're broadcasting. This high, I know, you know, <laughs> yeah. We can edit it out. The people watching live will never tell Kotaku. It's fine. Like, yeah, I mean, look. Uh, is it all of, under everything? It's everything. No, so, uh, gosh, we're working on lots of different kinds of partnerships. Uh, we're partnering with the biggest and best game publishers in the world to bring their lineup for the foreseeable future to our platform. We are working on exclusive games that will only launch on our platform because literally they could only be built with this technology. Sure. Right. We are working on games that we've found out in the wild and we've gone, that is amazing. How do we lean into that to create something that does something incredibly special on Stadia? Um, you know, we have partnerships across the board. We have partnerships with studios made up of one person. We have partnerships with the biggest game developers in the world. Um, it's it, like, this is a game platform, robust, right? Yeah, we want to yeah. be able to, we want to be able to do everything and then some that any other game platform can do. Um, and our game content lineup represents that. Okay. Good answer. Yeah. You didn't get in trouble. Don't worry. Okay. They're fine. It's not like we're broadcasting. I know. <laughs> Here is, this is the most pointed question I probably have. Go on. Do, how much longer ballpark do we have to wait for another, like, Stadia Direct, right? Like, I mean, you have to talk to us one more time before <laughs> November. I need to know the goddamn date. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, I can't talk to any specific marketing beat, because otherwise yeah, yeah. marketing's going to jump through the screen. And <laughs> <laughs> Patrick's over there pacing. <laughs> exactly. He's watching. He's watching. But look, you know, we're not done talking about Stadia. Yeah. Um, so you expect us to talk a lot more. I mean, here I am here today talking Good about point. Stadia. There's going to be more and more uh, communication coming from us to the community. Um, so yeah, I mean, what form that will will take? I mean, we'll have to wait and see. I don't want to spoil any surprises okay, that I'm not supposed okay. to spoil. Uh, but yeah, I mean, a lot more to come for sure. Okay. Well, speaking of more to come, we're going to jump into your questions from the friend zone. You can submit those at patreoncom slash funny where you can also get the show ad free. And speaking of ads, let me tell you about our sponsor, Upstart, and a horn honking outside. As most of us have found out the hard way, getting into debt is easy and getting out is hard, especially if your credit score isn't great. Thankfully, now there's Upstart.com, the revolutionary lending platform that knows you're more than just your credit score and offers a smarter interest rate to help you pay off high interest credit card debt. If you're a games daily listener, you've heard me talk about this quite a few times. I moved to San Francisco, took out a loan, and Jack, boy, how did that have a bad interest rate? And it was not good. But I wish Upstart existed because Upstart goes beyond the traditional credit score when assessing your credit worthiness. They actually reward you based on your education and job history in the form of a smarter interest rate. Upstart believes you're more than just your credit score. They believe in you and they understand that. They make it fast, simple, and easy to check your rate in just a few minutes. And the best part, once the loan is approved and accepted, most people get their funds the very next business day. The next day! Over 300,000 people have used Upstart to pay off credit cards or meet their financial goals. Uh, you can see for yourself and free yourself from the burden of high interest credit card debt by consolidating everything into one monthly payment with Upstart. See why Upstart is ranked number one in their category with over 300 businesses on Trustpilot and hurry to upstart.com slash morning to find out how low your Upstart rate is. Checking your rate only takes a few minutes and it won't affect your credit. That's Upstart dot com slash morning 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 it is very surreal to be sitting here watching you do that live yeah, yeah. when i've heard it so many so times, many times. Oh, yeah when I, when I was like oh it's upstart and you're like oh i know all yeah. about upstart i bet you could have used that when you were young yeah, yeah, i know it well i know it uh, well. i appreciate your support <laughs> i also appreciate the support from every patreon.com slash kind of funny let's 
get in to the friend zone where people have written in with questions for you. Uh, Mitch Krasen writes in and says, for Jack, during the process of developing Stadia, at which point did you realize you were doing something wholly unique? Was it from the start or was there a particular moment you think speaks to you as special? You talked about, you know, them pulling back the curtain and seeing what that was I crazy. Think Google was, but like for this in, in, stadium in particular. That was that was definitely a crazy moment. I'll I'll tell another story. Um, so when I showed up, uh, I was still the very very early days of Stadia. Uh, there was a gentleman there named Dove who had come up with this original idea and had been working on it for quite some time. Sure. Um, and we had brought in a team by that point that were, we were working in earnest, but uh, we'd never actually gotten any game up and running on the thing. Like we had tech demos. <laughs> a lot of great ideas. A lot of, <laughs> lot of streaming <laughs> pixels and stuff, but like, you know, yeah, <laughs> big dreams and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, a pretty magical moment actually happened. We were at E3. Uh, we were talking at id Software. Um, we are telling them about what we were working on, and they were like, <laughs> I still remember Duffy, the id Software. He's like, let me add it, you know? Let right. me add it. And we're like, oh, it software wants to work on this. All right. You know, we had our very, very first dev kits. Um, and I remember we were having this huge debate internally. That, uh, a good friend of mine, Boz, on the engineering team, he's like, Jack, what have you done? That is the highest Twitch, 60 frames per second. Like, if there's any lag whatsoever, like, you're going to totally, it. yeah, this yeah. is like the hardest possible thing you could throw at this technology. What have you done? Yeah. And I'm like, Boz? If it doesn't run this, like, what are we doing? Yeah. Right? We've got yeah. to throw the hardest thing we've got right out of the gate because otherwise we're wasting our time. And I still remember, boss, I won't repeat his exact words. So. <laughs> <laughs> but he's like, ah, just go do it. I'm like, all right, great. Um, and I'll tell you, I mean, this hats off to id Software. They are truly amazing. Talk about a talented development studio, the best of the best. Uh, and within no time, we had Doom, which was still new at the time, running in our office. And we're all huddled around the screen with this dev kit. And we're just like, oh, my God, it works. Yeah. Like, it works. It works. You know? um, and that was really how we got that shot in the arm that we needed because we started, look, Google's filled with, you know, we're all Silicon Valley tech people. We all play video games, right? Sure. So we're showing it to the executives at Google. And many of them play video games. And they're like, oh, my God, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, and it was one of those things that just kind of sold itself. Like the more people we showed Doom to at Google, the that more people. That is the game, just, man. Yeah, that's that, the game. You're right. Like, right? I mean, that was such a great place to start at. Exactly. Again, if you can run that, because that's always the knock. Exactly. Oh yeah, uh, remote it's, play is great yeah, for turn based RPG. RPGs. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but it's like, no, we started with Doom. Yeah. Right, like yeah. the twitchiest, fastest paced FPS out there. Beautiful game. Yeah, beautiful game. Loved it. Yeah. A little awkward to show chainsawing zombies to the top executives at Google someday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, but uh, it's like amazing uh, in terms of performance. And we showed like, hey, we have got something special here. The fact is, this is something special that the world has not seen before. You can sit here and play Doom on this TV with this Chromecast, and it feels like you're playing it on the console. And we would do the Pepsi challenge. We'd switch between the console and the Chromecast, and we'd go, okay, which is which? Yeah, 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 and the only way you could tell which one was Stadia was because Stadia is because it's running on in a data center. It's all server class stuff in there, so like <laughs> the load times are like whoosh, like super fast, <laughs> and the console would still be sitting there chug 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 loading the level, and you'd be halfway through the through the level playing the thing. You're like, okay, that's Stadia because it loads super fast. <laughs> I got it. I got it. Load times gave it away. Exactly. I understand, I understand. Exactly. That's, that's magical, man. Once once we had that up and running, I think everybody at the company knew. Okay, we're we're in. We have to do this. You talk about it jumping on board. You know, you when the company sees an action, what have you found with outside of Google partners, whether it be publishers, developers, like are they at first, uh, I don't know about this, or is it they have to see it, or do, are they all in? Are they excited? So, well, it depends. Yeah. Okay, so first and foremost, getting developers hands-on with Stadia is, if you don't get that, then th nothing else matters, right? Gotcha. So step one is always play it, right? Because developers have the same skepticism that gamers have, if not even more so, because like this is their beloved game, their IP. They've I've invested a lot of I've yeah, worked yeah. on this for years. I'm not putting this on a platform that can't do justice to what I'm trying to do. So let me play it. So first step, all right, here, here's the controller, go. You know, and we'll have like super, super fast twitchy games. We'll have fighting games. We'll have FPSs. We'll have like the hardest possible games you could throw at Stadia up and running just as a demo. 
and you just you can just see people their eyes you know, like you the experience you had at E three I think you yeah. played Doom Eternal right yeah, you know, totally. it's like you just sit there and you're just like what like this isn't really happening you know you're, you're cheating there must be a you know oh you're streaming it from a dev kit in the other room no 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 this is coming <laughs> from San Jose this is uh, very far away yeah. you know um, you get that magical moment and then. You know, we'll, we have a presentation that will show that shows what the actual technology is, the infrastructure, and we'll do that same sort of opening of the curtain that happened to me when I joined, and we'll say, you know, this is our data center network. Like, look at this. Like, all of this stuff is connected with Google proprietary networking, and it's connecting all of these metropolitan areas all over the world together with something the world has never seen before. The scale and size of this network is staggering, and you just see game developers going. Let me add it. <laughs> Let me add it. Let me add it. Everyone's on board for it. Yeah, I mean, look, I mean, the, the, the lineup speaks for itself. People are like, hey, I want to be a part of this. I want to make sure my game is there because, number one, I want to see what this technology is like. Number two, I just want to be a part of this, right? And I want to learn along with everybody else that's going on this journey. I mean, the, it's the excitement uh, that you brought up already of what it could mean in terms of you. Uh, developers make games to get the games played. Yeah. All right? And so you want as many hands as possible. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you want to be on everything, let alone, again, something that I could just play on the phone. That's right. I don't even need the controller. I don't need the thing. I that's could just right. get in there and buy I can just play it on mouse and keyboard on the, the computer I already have, the netbook I have. That's there. right. And I think the other aha moment happens when people start to realize the creative possibilities, right? So we'll show a demonstration of somebody watching a game stream on YouTube, and they'll click on the YouTube video, and then, boom, they're in the game playing. Yeah. And you'll see a game developer go, wait a minute, let's do that one more time? Yeah. You know, ruin that. You know, and like you'll say, yeah, so this is a YouTube video, and now the person's clicking it, and now they're in the game. Yeah. No loading, no downloads, no patches, no firmware updates, no nothing. It's just like within seconds you're in, and like they go, well, wait a minute. So what does that mean I can do? And you're like, anything. You mean I can drop you down as that person right there? Yeah, sure. You mean I could be somebody in the audience? I could be somebody with a camera just filming what's going on and streaming that? Sure. You know, you, you think it up, right? See, and that's, the thing. That's, where it gets, that's when it gets nuts. If it you talk nuts. about, like, especially with, you know, live streaming of games, yeah. when the next developer or the developer that you're probably already working with is like, we got we you know what battle royale was here's what it's going to be here where yeah your favorite streamer goes live and everybody's like ding, 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 clicking in to be there and go and fight and be part of it i mean even think about battle royale right another example we give is like if you take a battle royale game you got like 100 people playing and basically your pc or your console is busy trying to coordinate with my pc and my console and there's 98 other pcs and consoles and they're all trying to network them all together to make it look like there's 100 people running around a battlefield right yeah. um that's a very tough engineering problem, which is why Battle Royale games are relatively new. It took a while for us to figure out how do you synchronize a hundred different consoles in people's living rooms with varying degrees of internet connectivity all over the world. It's tough. Yeah. But with Stadia, it's the world's largest LAN party, right? Ultra high bandwidth, super, super stable connections between every like person playing. Sure. People always ask, well, is multiplayer going to be good on Stadia? I'm like, Oh, yeah, like <laughs> way better than what you could get out of a console because all of these, you know, cloud instances are all talking to each other with these very, very robust high bandwidth pipes. You yeah. can imagine multiplayer worlds with like, forget hundreds, like thousands of people all running around a, a, a play field together all, all at the same time, all being rendered up on the screen. Yeah. That, 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 that's crazy. Like the world yeah, has not seen no, that kind no, of stuff that's, before. That, I mean, that, and that's where, again, it gets exciting when you start talking about it. Yeah, because it's even like, you know, uh, every time I talk about this, people are always like, well, Greg, you could always do that. You could already do this with remote play. There's an app, there's the <laughs> phone. I'm like, but yeah, but I've had bad experiences with remote play of it's on the bad hotel Wi Fi pinging something to ping my home Wi Fi to ping me. And it's like, that's a pain. It's Whereas a everybody's in the same cloud if we're all right there doing it, right? One to one. And this is, I mean, the, the, the question was, you know, how do you get developers on board? You have this conversation, yeah, right? Yeah. And you show them the technology and you give them the development environment and you're like, just go. You tell us what you want to do with this. And like, they're in. They're like, okay, challenge accepted. Like, yeah. let's build something the world has not seen before. Let's take this creative idea that I have and let's finally realize it because I've never been able to actually realize this thing that's been in my head with current generation technology. It's going to take something totally new and radical like this. It's awesome. Yeah. Don't screw up the landing. Don't screw up the landing. I'm excited <laughs> for this. Don't make me look like an idiot. Uh, Kale Dolphincorn wrote it into Patreon.com slash kind of funny and says, For Jack, does Google have any plans for acquiring studios to make first party exclusives? Or is your main focus getting third party hits on Stadia? 
So without getting into sort of the tactical details, I can say that we are very interested in helping developers that want to build something new and different on Stadia that couldn't be built other, uh, you yeah. know, somewhere else. So we talked yeah, yeah. a lot about it. Yeah. You know, we're scratching the surface of this at launch. You'll see more and more of this stuff materialize over the coming year. But that's really where our focus is in terms of like exclusive experiences. Sure. Because, you know, you see a lot of game platforms are like, hey, it's exclusive. And it's like, okay, well, what's the point, right? Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, for us, the point is because you want to help a developer do something that can't be done yeah. elsewhere, yeah, 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 right? Yeah. Like literally, this is exclusive because it's a thing that can only work here, right? And I think those are the best kinds of exclusives. Yeah. So the partnership can take many different forms in order to get them there. A lot of it's like, well, what does the developer want? You know, what is the vision? How big is that vision? Where do we want to go? What are we going to try to build? When do we want to build it by? I mean, these are very, very nuanced conversations. But at the end of the day, what we want to be able to deliver is deliver stuff that moves the needle in terms of the creative possibility of what a video game can be. And that's the right way to do it, right? You're, I like your your stance on exclusives. Like, what what is just being exclusive? What does that matter? It needs to take advantage of it, right? Yeah. Because again, I do think you the, the inherent capability, right? What Stadia is already makes it enticing to gamers like me to make me get it on that platform, to have it with me anywhere with just a controller, just my phone, just whatever, right? That alone, it doesn't need to be exclusive to your platform as much as like, again, like we were just talking, if Borderlands gets it together and gets cross-saved together, hoo-wee, you bet I'm <laughs> playing it on Stadia, right? And I'm be beaming at my thing around because I put so much time in. If Cyberpunk launches alongside it and here we go, yeah, that's where I want to be because I was never going to put in the 400 hours to platinum Cyberpunk, but I want to be in Cyberpunk for as long as possible wherever I am. Yeah, and we're again, we're really big on cross progression, you know, cross play. Like, we understand, like, you know, people are going to be playing across multiple platforms or at least have friends on other platforms. Like, we get it. Yeah, we get it. And we, again, we want to take a very open approach to this, right? This is not about throwing up walls. This is about breaking down barriers. That's what motivates us. That's the mission we're on. So you're going to see us remain pretty consistent to that. Okay. Uh, Daniel Ferraro writes in and says, for Jack, I know inter I I know our internet is garbage, but what does the roadmap look like for Stadia in Australia? Okay, great question. Um, hello, Australia. Oi! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we've announced at launch we'll be in 14 countries. So mm. U.S., Canada, U.K., 11 other countries in Europe. Um, from there, you can expect us to add more and more countries over time. Um, that will sort of happen on a rolling basis. Uh, so you'll hear us talk more and more about really two things, like more countries we're coming to as well as more screens, if you will, right? So more endpoints that you'll be able to stream yeah. to. Um, and again, this is going to be an evolution. So this is going to be something that will be happening over time. We have a plan. We'll be executing against that plan. I don't want to spoil the surprise sure. on any particular country. But uh, look, the mission we're on is to get to as many people as humanly possible, right? And in order to do that, we're going to have to deploy in many, many, many countries. Yeah. So, you know, that's the plan. Okay. Yeah. Jack, thank you for coming and spending time with me. Good to see you, Greg. It's good to see you. I'm sorry we have to do it on camera. <laughs> I think the last <laughs> time I saw so busy now, that's how it has to be. I'm last like, time oh. I saw you, I was getting off the ferry and I'm like, hey, Greg. Oh, yeah, yeah right. Like, yeah. Oh, we got to get together. I'm like, yeah, yes, yeah, we should. Yeah. <laughs> that was fun because I was yeah. with, uh, I was going to the Man of a Dan event. So I was with a whole bunch of press people and they're like, who is that? I'm like, oh, you guys didn't even know. <laughs> Let me tell you about PlayStation Home. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, so, November, Stadia is coming up. Look, we're coming. Uh, we're all working real hard. Can't wait for November. Um, yeah, so more details to come shortly. And look, it's a shame Fran ain't around today. I wish I could have said hi to that guy. So we give him, give him a big hug four for hours me. if that happened yeah. to Fran this year. <laughs> well, I don't know what about this. Now, I stream a lot. So <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, of course, this has been another episode of We Have Cool Friends. Remember, each and every Monday, we invite one of our cool friends doing something cool to tell us about their cool things. If you like that, please go over to youtube.com slash roosterteeth.com and podcast services around the globe. Watch, listen, subscribe, share, all that jazz. Until next time, no, it's been our pleasure to serve you. I was going to give you a high five.